We come here today, even in the moment of bereavement, knowing that you have comfort that you can give us, even in a time like this. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the life of Brother Robert. We thank you for the life of Brother Jimmy. We thank you for the time that we had to share. We thank you for bringing them on this earth. Today, we come here in faith, believing that even though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear because we believe that you are with us even during this time. You've been with Robert. You are also with Jimmy. So we ask that you would be with us. Bless us, God, today as we celebrate the life of these two brothers. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. I'm going to ask if Reverend Derek Liggins will come and he will read from our Old and New Testament texts. And then following that, our soloist, Sister Jeanette Turner, is going to come and bless us through song. Old Testament reading, Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the shadow of the valleys of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou ride thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled, but believe in me. Trust also in me that I, my father's house has many mansions. And if it was not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go there to prepare a place for you, I will come back to take you unto me where I am and that you may be also. You know the way to the place where I'm going. But Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know what the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. Amen. Can we say praise the Lord in this house? Amen. Can we give God a hand clap of praise in this place? They're going home now. Amen. We want you to put your hands together like this to Pastor Macon and to the other minister, to the family. May God bless you and keep you. Come on. Oh, 
bless you. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. I'm going to ask at this time if we will have our reflection period. I'm going to ask if Sister Tara will come and also Jamillus and Summer. If the three of them will come to my left, to your right, to the stage at this time to give their two minutes of reflections. If they're here today, will you come forward? Again, Tara, Jamillus, and Summer. Give them a great big hand clap as they come up today. father was my hero, my best friend. He taught me how to deal with my anger. He taught me how to deal with bullies, how to, you know, manage my emotions. Um, he was a happy person, my father was. All, all, he, um, all he valued was his family and happiness. spent 20 years getting to know my father. I'm sorry he never got to meet his grandson. I know he would have enjoyed him. My father was like a like a jungle gym as a kid. He was real big, like super tall, heavy, just nobody, you know, would bother him. He was the sweetest thing. He was like a giant teddy bear. He never let me deal with my problems alone. He never let me be sad. He was pure, pure love. My father was a generous and uh, passionate man. He told the craziest stories. He told the craziest jokes. He had the best humor, the best laugh. Even when he was crazy, he was still loving. He was very strong. He fought. He fought hard. And he did that. I'm going to choose to value, I'm going to choose to value happiness. For some reason, valuing time, school, work, money, it doesn't leave you with much when it's just you and your heart. My father had a great heart. If he didn't have anything, he had a great heart. <laughs> he valued all of us, and now God has his most precious gem of them all right there next to him. It takes all of two minutes to be creative, nine months to arrive, 20 years to learn and grow, just to work 20 more years and save all your money. Now you're giving it to someone so that you can eat. I think it's very important to value, I think it's very important what you value while you're here. And knowing who my father was, he didn't waste his life not being who he was. He valued happiness, and now he is really at peace. Thank you all.
to a safe special and so good to me. And he can make the best potato salad you ever tasted. Yeah, and I didn't get him to show me how before he left. But I really miss him, and I thank God for giving me 42 years with him. Because he was his son first. But now he's back with his dad, his original dad. And we're going to miss him. We're going to miss him. Uh, he was just always there. If I was in the hospital, I open my eyes. He could stay the night. He cooked for me and just all kind of things. And he could do anything. He was jack of all trades could fix anything, tear up anything when he could see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, he was very good, very good. I don't know what I'm going to do now about my TV is one thing. I'm going to tell my lease because he's always fixed everything. So, you know, he's gone on to a better place, and I'm thankful to have had the time with him I did. I can say is I love my son. I'm glad he hasn't, you know, had to suffer no more. He's going off into a better place. He will be missed. See you soon. It's a very, very sad day for me. And my mom, my family. brother he meant so much to me he was the best big brother I could ever ask for growing up with him it was just so much fun there's just so many things that I can say about him I love him so much I'm gonna miss him miss him so, so much. I love you, Tight. I love you. I'm going to miss you. And my love for you will never, ever, ever, ever die. Now Tara's going to come forward. Give her a great big hand clap as she comes. Amen. concerned about in here. Uh, Jimmy, he knows I love him. Always babysitting him. And I was the only one besides my mother that was brave enough to babysit him. 
because when he was, when he was, uh, let on his terrible tools, he was something else. <laughs> but uh, we hung in there with him, but just a sweet soul. Uh, Robert, dear Robert, you were an awesome person. You were so loving and patient. You were my best friend and the love of my life. You were the king of our home. We shared 34 great years together as husband and wife. We had more ups than downs. We learned to compromise and be there for each other. You were a good husband, a father, friend, good father, and friend. You fought a good fight, David, to have endured 18 years of back pain from your injury. At work. God allowed me to be there with you as you transition from this life to everlasting life you intended. I had to be strong to you and me. So I told you to take the Lord's hand and go with him and that I would be okay. Uh, told you that I would see you again on the other side. And I'll tell you, just go to sleep, baby. Eat good. I will always love you. And you will always be in my heart. So you rest, baby. I love you. Come on, put your hands together. I want you to do me a favor and open up your obituary at this time as we read the obituary silently. Let us read about the life of Brother Robert Guy. I want to start with the obituary with Robert Guy. And then after you read up on Robert, I want you to read up on James Lewis Brown in this moment of silence. Again, please open your program as we read about the life of these two brothers. Brother Robert Guy and Brother James Lewis Brown. Let us reflect. Titus Guy. Uh, who we have here is my cousin and my father. And uh, it wouldn't be right if I didn't get up here to say something, so I made my way back to Dayton, Ohio. Um, start with my cousin, Jimmy. <laughs> um, growing up, we had some, some wild times, you know. Uh, his aunt would, you know, babysit him and Chucky, and we all had fun. In the, you know, grandma's old house. 
you know, uh, in Israel, you know, you know, taking pictures, playing tag, just doing wild stuff, and it's, it was real fun, and, you know, it's crazy, and it's, you're going to definitely be missed, you know, all my brothers, Chucky, the rest of the family, you know, um, rest in peace. And my father, you know, going a little bit deeper, because, uh, you know, we're a combined family, you know, so, and, uh, you know, combined family can have difficulties coming together, but we were able to for the most part, and, you know, I just think of all the fun times with my father, of course, you know, the motorcycles, the cars, you know, the, the, the racing, is everything that was car related. It was everything about that. And um, there's nothing you can do to, you know, change what's, what's happened. You know, they say to be, you know, not present with the body is to be, of course, present with the Lord. And I respect that. It's kind of a soul, I feel like, you know, well, both of them are gone too soon, but here to to somebody like me I have to say that I have to reflect on something I call a serenity prayer and basically it's the serenity to be able to accept the things that I cannot change the strength to be able to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference between the two so I will miss you both, and uh, we'll see you in heaven, okay? Thank you. Amen. Come on, give him a great big hand clap. Amen. I'm going to ask that at this time our technicians will play a special video that we have from Pastor Barnes, Pastor Calvin Barnes. Give Pastor Calvin Barnes a great big hand clap all the way from Texas. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the church here at uh, Mount Zion Church of Oakwood Village and the senior pastor, uh, Dr. Larry Macon, senior. What a joy it is to be able to do this, this video and being allowed to be played in your church. Um, as you know, Robert was a, a great friend of mine. We grew up together and we did a lot of uh, things together and I couldn't be there because of the difficulty in traveling so this right here is, is the, the best thing we can come with the tower had come up with is uh, allowing me to do this video because it's very important to me because we were so close that I would have opportunity to say anything about him and of course uh, our, our most rememberable thing is that we rode motorcycles together. And that's a joy uh, that that Tara and, and, and Robert and myself would do as a threesome, per se. And then uh, there were times that Robert and I would just would, would ride together. Many times, uh, I live now here in Houston, Texas, but at the time we, um, we would ride to uh, Columbus just to have lunch and then have this beautiful ride back. And what a joy that was. And not just the motorcycles. Uh, we had a lot in common in terms of the Lord. We would sit together and talk about issues about the Lord and God and how the church would be ran and so on. I was a pastor there. He was a great member, him and his wife, Tara. And uh, they, they, they did a lot for me. They were supportive to me. And that's not, and, that, and doing back that time, that wasn't very popular uh, supporting pastors. But this, this, this couple here, I'll never forget all the great things that they had done for me. And I'll never forget and, and to remind others uh, what a great couple they were supporting me in the church. So that's partially why uh, I want to do this because re uh, he, reflecting on him, you know, a lot of you knew him and maybe some of you didn't know him, but um, uh, from my perspective, uh, he's a, he was a godly man, a great father and a wonderful husband. And I love his, his soft, voice when he talked you know that voice of his was just so soft and that kind of reflects his heart 
give, a really soft heart, and just a loving, giving kind of guy. And it's just wonderful uh, to know him and to, and, to, and, to, and to know that now that he's in the presence of God. The scripture reminds us that absent from the body is that we all be present with the Lord, those who have given their life to Jesus the Christ. So anyway, I can go on and on, which I would love to, but I know there's others here that would love to get up and share some things about your relationship with him. So I'm going to cut it a little short because I'm getting kind of emotional right now, and I uh, didn't want to do that. But uh, I really love Robert and Sister Guy, Tara. I, I love you, and I always love you. And I always will be supportive to you anytime, of course, you need anything from me. I'm just a phone call away. So once again, thank you, church. Of Oakwood, um, it's a, such a blessing to uh, know that there's people in churches like you guys are still supporting other people who are in bad situations because I believe that's what Christ wants to do is help those who are in need. So once again, thank you very much. And again, my name is Calvin Barnes, pastor here in uh, Houston. Uh, we are Church of the Living God. We are a one church with two campuses, two locations. So if you've ever come to Houston, look us up. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Now at this time, Sister Jeanette Turner is going to come and bless us through song. Give her a great big hand clap as she comes forward and bless us. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Amen. These are soldiers going on home. Amen. This supposed to be a happy occasion, yet it do hurt. But we know where they're gone. We haven't lost them. Amen. Come on and clap your hands again for him. Come on. Anybody ask you where I am going? Where I am going soon? If you want to know. Some of you can relate. Heartache life brings the comforting and knowing I soon will be gone. Hey, hey, God, give me grace. I run this race. Clap your hands. God bless you and keep you as I pray. Amen, amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Today we share in a great loss today. Actually, two great losses. We are here to remember two 
good men. How many of you remember Robert and Jimmy as a good man? Come on, put your hands together for them. Let's salute them today. Uncle and nephew, Robert, Guy Sr., and Jimmy Brown. You heard the story of Robert. How many of you knew Robert? Just raise your hand if you knew Robert. Many of you knew Robert. You heard the remarks of Pastor Calvin Brown, excuse me, Barnes, all the way from Texas. Give Pastor Barnes a great big hand clap one more time. We'll be streaming this, and we want him to know how much we appreciate him. You know, the family characterized Robert as funny, as joyful, a jokester, laid back, loved his children, caring, yet patient. But what I learned most about him was the stories about him, how he met Tara and his nickname and how his grandmother had named him and how he loved to work and how he loved to care for cars and loved the motorcycles. And he was a different, unique kind of guy. And you know what? I like that. Then there was Jimmy. Jimmy. I enjoyed hearing about Jimmy because Jimmy was just a little older than me. He was born in 1979, born in the age of the creation of video games and technology. You saw in the in the program where he was characterized as a gentle giant, I can tell that Jimmy was a guy that you wanted to know. I, I, I believe that because I heard Jimmy could barbecue. I heard he had the best potato salad. Can somebody say amen to that about his potato salad? And so I bet the 4th of July with Jimmy was a big treat. So that's why today is a rough day losing both of these brothers. It's a sad day. It's a, you hate to lose two good men, one uncle and one nephew who you, you knew that, that loved you and who you loved and who you knew loved also each other. However, just what I just want to say for a quick moment, even on a day like this, I want you to do something. I want you to focus on the moments that you shared with both of them. I want you to focus on the moments that you shared with them. I want you to focus on the things that they shared with you. Maybe it was Robert's jokes or maybe it was his patient spirit or if it was Jimmy's willingness to always help or if it was, was all the talking that he would love to do. I heard that Jimmy could talk. Is that true? Or maybe it was Jimmy's cooking per se. Those, those moments, those conversations, these times that you had to share were their legacy. Can somebody say the word Legacy. See, today is not just a funeral, it's a memorial service where we can remember and celebrate the legacy of both these men. See, truth is, the family here to gather, here together, you are a part of their legacy. So when we celebrate their life, we are celebrating their legacy. However, even if thinking about the moments that you had to share, thinking about things that they had to say, or thinking about their legacy doesn't ease your pain, I want you to remember this, that sometimes people are going through things that you'll never know. Sometimes the body fails us. You know, sometimes life gets unbearable. Sometimes we deal with things that, that nobody knows and nobody would ever tell us about. But I'll tell you one person that does know, and the truth of the matter is, God knows. God knows our struggles. God knows our pain. And I believe that God knew Robert and God knew Jimmy. Truth is, God knows how you even feel on today. God knows the struggles that we have to go through in life. God knows how even this pandemic is affecting people. God knows what sickness does to the body. But the greatest thing is that God knows how to help us get through it. And so today we mourn, we are bereaved, we are going through a tough moment. But, but, but I want to tell you, it's good to know that God knows. God knows your struggles. God knows what we're feeling today. And because he knows, what I want to tell you is God wants to leave us all some hope. Our hope today is that our relationship with the Lord, our, our hope today is that through our relationship with the Lord, that, that at the end of the day, our family members that have left us, those that have gone on to glory, that know Jesus for themselves, have actually been moved to a better place. See, I'm happy to report that to be absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. Now, somebody may be asking, what could be better than life on this earth? What, what could be better than that? Well, those that die with a, with a belief in Jesus Christ and his death, his burial, and his resurrection get to make it to what we call to the land of no more. 
to the land of no more sickness to the land of no more pandemic to the land of no more crazy politics to the to the land of no more headaches to the land of no more injustices he's no longer dealing with the health issues of today they're no longer dealing with the with the challenges of the body because we know today that that at the end of the day when we believe in Jesus Christ we're actually doing better than we were before because to be absent from the body means to be at home with the Lord so we can even celebrate today we should always remember about the fact that if you know Jesus everything is going to be all right and so what we should always remember about Robert and Jimmy is a few things remember their voice Remember their voice. Remember the things that they would say. Remember the conversations that you would have. And if you can keep these things in your spirit, it will again help their legacy to live on. And lastly, before I go, I want to remind you of something. I want to remind you that these services are not just for, for our loved ones that have passed on, but these services, these homegoing services are also for us. They're for us. It's a time to remember that we can be here today and gone tomorrow it's a time for us to to get right with God it's a time for us to to know that life is a destin is not a destination but life is a journey and so the best decision that you can make in life right now is to ask Jesus to come into your heart and recognize him as your Lord and Savior so when your season has ended you get access to eternal life Days like these and funerals like these are our reminder and our moment to reflect that we should always be ready. The Bible says, be ye always ready. But never forget that even in times like these, God is with you, God is for you, and God will take care of you if you keep your faith in him. One day he eventually heal our broken hearts. One day the, the pains that we feel today, the challenges that we have on this earth won't be our portion always because we believe that God will present a sense of ease that we need not only to, to, to bear our burdens but to carry our burdens. Never forget, God will never put more on us than we can bear. God will never put more on us that we cannot get through if we are leaning and trusting in him. So my message today as I close is this. If you haven't accepted Christ into your heart, then this is the last time that you'll see these two men. But I want to tell you this. If you've accepted Christ and if you know and believe that he died on the cross for your sins and rose from the grave on the third day, that today is not a goodbye. It's just a see you later moment. You will see these men again. And so I want to ask you, will you say yes to Jesus? And if you've already said it, I want you to give him some praise right now. Listen, I want you to stand with me right now, and I want you to stand with me right now, and I want you to bow your heads in a word of prayer as our funeral directors, they can come forward. Stand with me right now. I would like to read this special letter to the family of James Lewis Brown and also again Robert Guy Sr. It is with deep sympathy and tenderness of heart that we the pastors and members of Mount Zion express in a humble way our condolences to you and the passing of your loved one. We know that these two men will be missed by family and friends touched by his love and compassion. Have the blessed assurance that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ knows the pain that you feel in your loss and that he will grant you peace and comfort. We want to assure you that you will be in our thoughts and prayers over the weeks and months to come in the loss of these two brothers. We know that God will be your refuge and God will be your strength, providing all that you need to make it through this time of bereavement. We pray that the peace of Almighty God that surpasses all understanding comforts you, not only today, but in years to come, as you think on the cherished memories of your loved ones. With heartfelt sympathy, the Reverend Dr. Larry L. Macon Sr. and First Lady Marilyn Macon, Pastor Larry L. Macon Jr. and Elodie Macon, Pastor Daniel L. Macon and Bria Macon, and the family of the Mount Zion Church. Let us bow our heads as our funeral directors are coming forward as we do the committal.
again, thank God for the life of these two men. Thank God for bringing them onto this earth. Thank Him for the time that you had to share. But thank God that we have eternal life to look for. That we can all meet together again at the great family reunion in heaven. For as much it has pleased the Almighty God and His wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our dear brothers, Robert and Jimmy. We therefore commit their body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the resurrection at the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose coming to judge the world, the earth, and the sea, shall give up their dead, the bodies of those who sleep with him, shall be changed and be made like his glorious body according to that power by which he is able to subdue all things unto himself let us recite the Lord's prayer together our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name repeat after me thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen let us bow our heads almighty God we gather beside this grave today Today, the rest, the body of our dear friends and loved ones. We do so remembering one grave in another place, the tomb that received the body of our Lord Jesus. As Jesus came from the grave to live again, we know that all who die in him shall never truly die. Help us, Father, to walk by faith and not by sight. With our trust in him who said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, and I am the living when I was dead. And behold, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.